and it's lights out welcome to the pit wall this is our team lineups pit wall picks edition joining me this evening my bro dominic and my dad dr david kessler let's begin with the news that haas is finally going to get their long awaited upgrades it's reported that the upgrades is going to be visually different to the point that some people might even call it the white mercedes because as you're probably aware they work closely with Mercedes and so a lot of the things that they're going to be designing is probably going to be to that end. How do you think this is going to impact your team? Well, only one driver is going to get that upgrade. And Gunnar Seiner, the team boss, says the one with the most championship points. So bro and dad, is that going to sway you on picking Magnussen versus Schumacher? Or who have you been picking up these last few races? Now that you've heard the news, Magnussen is going to get the upgrades. I've been having Magnussen on mine because Mick Schumacher has not been consistently uh, performing as well as Magnussen, in my opinion. And so that's why I've had him. Okay, true. But the last two races, he's outperformed Magnussen uh, because of his points, being ahead of him in Austria, and then, of course, Magnussen's DNF here. But like you said, uh, in the past, he hasn't been uh, the most consistent. Okay, bro, what about you? I haven't had either recently money's a kind of tight and trying to figure out how i can make it all work out but those are the two cheapest drivers so who you yeah, running yeah, yeah. on your team but so the thing is yeah he is the cheapest driver and i could get him but then i was like okay but can i switch out some other drivers and try to take advantage of the fact that i have more money now and it's just not working out oh, um and okay I... well since we're there already let's kick it over bro let's talk about your lineup uh, you've got leclerc turboing Signs, Albon, Norris, Perez, and Ferrari. Okay, that's a pretty solid lineup. You have a 1.1 million left. So then the question is, you could drop Albon for either of those two guys, but Albon only scored one point less than Schumacher this last race. And so he was actually a pretty safe um, option this last race. So right. are you going to change this lineup at all, or what are your thoughts? So the two big things that I've been hearing about recently is we've got Stroll and now he's talking about Magnuson. And so this was the lineup that I had before I've been looking into this. Uh, it might change. And like I said, trying to figure out the money situation because actually Stroll costs too much and Magnuson costs a little bit less. Uh, so this might change. Uh, okay. But this is what I got right now. Like you're bringing up, that's the biggest reason. Uh, I'm going to share the stat from F1 Fantasy Hub on Twitter. Lance Stroll, he's 9.2 million. 8% of the league owns him. He averages 12.42 points. That's points per million, 1.35. Fifth after Botas, Leclerc, Perez signs, and he has zero DNFs, which is why he is perhaps the most reliable, underrated asset. But as you see, 9 million is just too expensive when you compare it to the likes of some of these other drivers. On a good day, Haas is ahead of both of the Aston Martins. So why would I pick up a guy who's 9 million that's going to give me 12 points instead of a Magnussen or a Schumacher that's going to give you 15 plus points and they cost half as much as their points per million that they're trying to output. But that's interesting. Dad, let's uh, get your impact. Have you ever considered Stroll? And hearing this stat, is he someone that you might start considering? So when they said that, I didn't know that stat. I thought, well, maybe I could consider him. So it'll depend on how much money gap I have between him and a cheaper driver. I'm not convinced yet to the point of changing him out for Magnuson. True. Or even Albon or some of these other guys that are there. We do see that the Mercedes have reliable engines. And so that's probably why he hasn't had any DNFs. But also... He's on a terrible team, so he's not getting any crashes. <laughs> so that's probably why Stroll is sliding under the radar, which now brings us to Dad's lineups. Hey, Dad, walk us through your two teams. It seems like you've got Magnussen, Russell, Leclerc, Turbo, Perez, Albon, and Red Bull on Team 1. Team 2 is slightly different in that you've got Gasly, and you've subbed out Russell to bring in... Verstappen. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay, so walk us through why the variation in those two lineups. So I wanted to see if Verstappen combination and stuff, Russell would give me more points. It really didn't work as well as I was thinking it would work. Mm. Of course, now Russell uh, Verstappen will have a race streak, which he didn't have last week. It's one of those things where I've tried to guess, and I just, Leclerc is just, he seems every time I depend on him. So I didn't have him as my turbo driver, and he won. 
I put it, I had Perez as my turbo driver. So this week I took Perez off of the turbo driver and put Leclerc and Perez and he went out of the race. And so it seems like, I don't know what to do with Leclerc. I'm almost going to just say, oh, let me get consistent points with signs and, and, and not worry about Leclerc and then or get rid of Leclerc and just put on Russell, have Verstappen Russell combination or something. I don't know. Well, I, Yeah. I have Russell already. So I'm thinking about actually taking Leclerc out and going with signs so i'd have signs leclerc perez and then i'd have to decide whether or not to go with uh ferrari if i mm. trust ferrari but you know if one of their drivers is gonna crash out i'm not sure i want ferrari as my constructor but here's the thing though this last race with leclerc dnfing ferrari scored only five points less than red bull and that's surprising oh. but that's because that they had a streak and so their quality streak gave them an additional five points. But like you said, it seemed like we're having some issues going on, which now brings us to a post that was shared in our Discord. Of course, link in the description below. You can continue this conversation. Amazing community. Johnny, he posted a little cool graphic. Was Leclerc faster than Verstappen? Saudi Arabia, in Bahrain, Australia, Spain, Monaco, Azerbaijan, England, Austria, France, yes, 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 yes. So only three races was he not faster than Verstappen. And we see that he has results that have been varying all over the place. And then he gives the error, the points that he lost, the context. And we just see how fast that Ferrari has been. But like you dad, said, Dad, I don't trust putting him on the team consistently. I do because I feel like it's good to run over the course of the season. But he sure has been bleeding me dry. And like you said, especially if you're trying to decide when to turbo him, it seems like him and Perez or, or Signs, the three of them, it's always going round and round about who the best option is. And so that's just unfortunate because if you look at all the positions that he's been losing, especially the three DNFs, uh, that's just a lot of fantasy points. Because in the first third of the season, Leclerc had the largest points in fantasy. And if I'm actually going to kick this over to our spreadsheet real quick. Looking at the spreadsheet, we see Verstappen 457 points, and Leclerc is now 361. That's roughly 100 points behind. Verstappen averaging 38 points, Leclerc averaging 29. If we go to the infographics tab of our spreadsheet, you actually see in a cool graph that huge gap that Verstappen has over the rest of the field. Last season, it was between him and Hamilton. This season, it's just no contest. And he's now going to get potentially an additional 10 points this race, which is now going to bring us to our big question. What would it take to get him on your team? Is he a must have on your team with that additional race streak of plus 10? I think I'll keep him on the team that has him. And then I will have to decide which one to put in the work elite. I mean, the one race challenge. Bro, it seems like because you've gone all in on Ferrari and Perez, you really can't put them in. Have you used any of your substitutions? I still haven't even... No, I haven't used my substitutions. I haven't used my wild card yet either. I mean, there is a chance that I could maybe work that out, but uh, that will have to be uh, later. Here's the problem, okay? We keep talking about Mr. Hackerman. Verstappen wins the race. He's going on a race streak. And he goes down by 0.1 million. So where is he losing all those trade-out values? Uh, it's ridiculous. We had him go down, and we had the Ferraris are winding down, and Perez is winding down. All these guys are just winding down. It just makes no sense. So I'm just losing money, and there's no point for me to try to juggle with three subs. Now, bro, you have a wild card, so you could have done all this to dodge, but it's okay. This brings me yeah. to my lineup. On my lineups, I've got Verstappen on team one. I've been having him for a couple races now. The problem is with my budget, I can't get fully on Red Bull with him. So I'm trying the best thing, which is Verstappen, Perez, and then having Ferrari and Leclerc. So that if Leclerc has an issue, then hopefully uh, I can get science points in there. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have the two um, Haases. But I'm needing to readjust my prices. Team two, though, I was actually afraid because I almost picked up Norris instead of Alonzo, but Alonzo passed Norris in the first uh, turns of the race, and so Alonzo ended up getting more points. I was happy about that. Alonzo is a pretty consistent pick, and so I'm happy, and I'm thinking about keeping him around. So on team two, I've done the opposite, where I've gone full in on Ferrari for my drivers and then had my Red Bull and Perez together so that I could give Verstappen's points. 
and my team two is starting to pull away from team one. It's funny how the team with less money seems to do better. <laughs> Um, but it is, I think, coming down to who do you turbo. I think there was a week that I decided to turbo Leclerc on one team and Perez on the other. Every time else, they seem to have the same turbo. Mm. So, you know, if I was smart, I should... Well, not smart, but if I was daring and gutsy, what I'd do is I would always make sure my two teams don't match their turbo. So I'd be happy, at least for one of the guys. Yeah, I mean, if you're willing to deal with that while you're doing the orc. Well, so that's the problem. Uh, at the beginning of the season, I was doing team two in the orc, meh so then i switch over to team one meh and so uh maybe i should be doing anyways i'm trying my best and i'm hoping everyone's having fun on the orc which now brings us to grp again a shout out for our discord grp is our chief analyst he's always providing cool stats in our channels and the one i'd like to share with you is a weighted expectation of points and on the right hand side he lists all the driver combinations and so his projected and of course we haven't seen free practice session one or two but the projected best lineup is Leclerc, Verstappen, Sainz, Botas, Albon and Ferrari which would projected to give you 224.6 points and that's a give or take of uh, 0.56 and so how do you guys think about that going Verstappen, Leclerc, Sainz, Botas, Albon and Ferrari? I would like to be able to afford all that <laughs> that sounds great like yeah that's like a great lineup but uh money's tight so like i said i still got that wild card though maybe i can make that work yeah we'll see what about so you how, how it looks like there's several that are close to that that's the most but the other combinations how much further ahead is that one okay well the projected 224 points and then the second best is 220 and then another 220 then a 225 oh interesting so the fourth lineup he projects to be 225 with Leclerc, Verstappen, Sainz, Stroll, Albon, Ferrari. So instead of having Botas have Stroll, which goes back to the whole idea is Stroll has been consistently getting his 1.3 points per million. I'll have to take this consideration. The big thing we have to realize is Hungary is very notoriously tight, just like Monaco. So it's very hard to get passing in. You probably remember the last season where the Alpine drivers work together. Ocon was able to defend against Vettel for pretty much the entirety of the race, and then Alonso was able to defend against a charging Hamilton so that he couldn't get near touching Ocon and fighting for the race win. But how do you guys feel like with these new regulations and how the driving might be closer? Do you think there's going to be much more opportunity for overtakes as we come into this race, or do you still think it's going to be a, a processional whoever qualifies highest is probably going to have the best result. I'd like to imagine that we would be able to see a little bit more going on, but uh, I'm still not 100% convinced that uh, that's going to happen. Okay. I agree with that. <laughs> I, you know, we have the new regulations, we're all excited, and it's like, okay, this should work, and um, I'm not convinced yet. Well, so that's something that surprised me. We've seen some really good races this season, and France, despite the new regulations, blah. So it's weird how France was such a way, and they're thinking, because it has a contract that needs to be renewed, they're thinking it's probably not going to return next year on the calendar. And I don't think anybody's going to complain, other than maybe the French sponsors for Gasly and Ocon, because that's their home Grand Prix. Hungary, what is it about Hungary, do you guys think, why it continues to stay on the calendar? We don't have any drivers from there. It's like the easternmost part of Europe, now that Russia is not on the calendar. What do you think it is about hungry where people still keep going there? Because everyone has to eat when they're hungry. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, let's put uh, let's put some things in the chat. Dad humor. Okay. <laughs> no, no. It's a fun track when you're planning on the game, but maybe they'll have some things to think about, you know, going forward once contracts and stuff have to get renewed. Yeah, so I think it's a combination of how much is the country or the city paying for the Grand Prix. Also, do people like the experience of racing? There? Because there's actually pretty good views and drama. And yeah, maybe a little processional, but guys are usually pretty close to each other. And so we have with these cars that can be closer, we might even have better fighting this this year. And I'm hoping so. I wouldn't be surprised if they go to more like a two year kind of schedule instead of one year. So like France or one of these other ones might be substituted in or out each, each year. So each 
year you have a different schedule instead of the same schedule every year. Yeah, so that's one of the things that they're talking about is having a rotation of tracks. And mm -hmm. then the second thing they're talking about is they're going to start grouping sections of areas together. So in the mm -hmm. past, tracks said this is the time that we, with our schedule, need to have the race. And F1 would work with it and trying to make sure there's good weather. Now what they're going to do is they're going to start clumping. They're going to try to put the North American races <laughs> close together. They're going to try to put the European races close together, the Middle Eastern races close together so that you kind of have a block. We're now going to Europe. All the teams now don't have to be flying all over the place. They can have all their delivery trucks and equipment trucks going to close places to save money. And so like you said, if we start having this rotation, then you can say, okay, in the European block this year, we have these races. Next year, we'll have a different one, but they're all still in the same area. So you're not trying to have all these logistics of the schedule. Teams and tracks will start saying, okay, in this part of the year, we're going to be going to this part of the world. Okay, we've looked at our team lineups and we've discussed the variable options. Of course, stay tuned for this Friday with our three statistical secrets after watching Free Practice 1 and 2. And until next time, we'll see you on the pit wall.